So finally, we are moving towards microservices. Of course, we have talked about the theory of microservice. Then we move towards building a project. Now, the project which we have built is called a quiz application, and it was a monolithic application. The reason we started with monolithic is it will make you understand how do you move a monolithic application to microservices, and also it will also help you to understand that why we have to go for microservices. The thing is, whatever application which we have built now is one big application, right? Of course, it's a small application, but imagine it's a big application, you have multiple services. Now, what we have done is we have an application which we have done. If you have not seen the video, the entire project, that's fine. I will give you a complete walkthrough uh, somewhere in between, and then we can get started. But just to get started here, what we have is we have a quiz application, right? And in this quiz application, if you can see, we have two controllers. One is your question controller, and second is a quiz controller. So let's say if you want to create a quiz. Now, of course, a quiz can have multiple questions. And then you can also select which topic you want to uh, build a quiz on. So maybe you want to give a quiz on Java or maybe Python or maybe any other subject, doesn't matter. And also, you need a way to add questions, remove questions, update questions, and also read questions, right? Now, that's what we can do in the question controller. Now, since everything is in one place, in one application, imagine you know, imagine this application has multiple uh, services. Now, apart from questions and quiz, let's say we also have user service where we are asking user to create an account. Or maybe we also have a payment gateway so that if someone wants to give the quiz, maybe they, they have to pay some amount. Or maybe we also want to give them a certificate. So we, we have to all those services. Now, when you do everything in one application, that's your monolithic application, right? What we want to build is, we want to build microservices. So each service which I've talked about, like question service, quiz service, uh, user service, maybe we have certificate service, these all are individual service and they are running independently. They're not dependent on each other. Of course, if you want to give a quiz, you have to first generate questions, right? You'll, you will get the quiz from the questions, right? So that's what we want to do. So the quiz and question will communicate. And of course, quiz will also communicate with the certificate, right? Because once you complete the quiz, you have to also generate a certificate. Maybe quiz will also ask for the payment. So everything is connected here, right? So or maybe they're connected with one big thing, which is, sub, which is quiz here. But the idea is we have to create small services which will run independently. Now, is it that easy to convert this project into two parts. Example, let's say we want to make sure that the question and the quiz will be separated. So there are two different microservices. Of course, you can, ha you can have some more microservices, but just to keep it simple, let's say we have two microservices. And here, when you talk about the quiz service, basically it, will, it is going to use the question service. Now what we, were, we had before in quiz is this. So basically, if you want to create a quiz, you can use a create URL, and then you can create a quiz. You can use, you can get a particular question, number of questions from a quiz by specifying the ID. Let's say uh, I take different sessions. I teach Java, I teach Python, I teach, let's say, a blockchain. So what I can do is for different batches, I can create different quiz. So qu quiz one, quiz two, quiz three. Now that's for this week. Next week, again, I have to create three different quiz. So that will be four, five, six, right? So that's my quiz ID. So if I specify a particular ID, it will give me all the questions for that particular quiz. And also, we can also get submit the quiz, basically. So let's say if participants are attending this quiz and they have submitted some response, we have to calculate a score. And that's what we are doing in the quiz controller. But then if you say generate or create a quiz, you need to get questions, right? And that will be done with the help of question controller. So you can see here, the question controller has an option of getting all the questions, getting the category, and add. But if you see nowhere, we are basically giving away the questions. Now that's something we have done in quiz itself because if I jump to the quiz implementation, this will make sense more when you have seen uh, the previous videos. So if you, if you click on the create quiz here, so you can see this is where we are generating the questions and that is coming from the question. That means the quiz and question are integrated tightly. These are tightly dependent uh, components. We have to find a way to make them decoupled, right? So basically we have, to make, we have to make sure that they are decoupled, right? Now to do that, we have to make some changes. Now what are the changes we have? Now first of all, we, when you talk about this create uh, quiz, which is here, we don't want to use question doubt directly. What we want is the question controller or the question service will be separated. It will have its own database. The weird thing is, or not exactly weird, but the thing is, if you open your PG admin, 
because we are using Postgres database here. Okay, it's asking for my password. Let me enter that. And uh, let me look at the database, what we had. So if you can see, we had only one database, which is your question DB, right? And in this question DB, we had different tables. If I see the schema uh, here, we had different tables here, right? So what we want to do is not just separate tables. Now we want to have separate databases. So question service will have everything related to question and quiz will have everything related to quiz here. And they will have a separate database. That also means that when you go back to the code, the quiz application or the quiz service will not be having question DAO. So let's say there are two different servers, quiz service and question service. Now when you say, hey, I want a quiz, the quiz service, which is there in other server, will request to the question service, hey, I want a few questions, right? So basically it is not in the same database. They are communicating over the network. So that's something we have to understand. Now, of course, there will be a lot of changes in this and we'll understand those changes one by one. So let's say we have separated the two different services. Now the problem is, it, may, it is possible that if you want to scale up this application, normally what happens is when you have one big application, you scale the entire application, right? But what if you have different services? Now in this case, if you think, hey, you know, uh, the quiz service will need more instance than question service, let's say, for an example. Now in this case, you can actually replicate or you can actually have multiple instance of a quiz service, but not question service. Let's say question service, we have two instance. For the quiz, we have 10 instance. Let's say we, I'm going to a big conference where we have 2000 participants. Maybe I want more instance of it. So that's something we have to understand that we can scale them individually. Also, now since we have multiple instance, they will have different IP address, right? How do you search? So let's say now we have question service, right? We have, we have two instance. And quiz, now I have five or 10 instance, let's say. When a particular quiz instance is requesting to the question, which instance it will pick? So we have to also do load balancing, right, between these two, which one to select. Okay, that's one. What else about the first link? So let's say the request comes from the client, and then you have these two different microservices. Do you think a client knows which service to go to? Of course, we don't want client to remember all the URLs, right, for the quiz and for the questions. What we can do is we can basically send the request to one particular API gateway. Now that API gateway is like a door for all the services and that will decide where to go. So that's one thing we need. So we basically need load balancers, we basically need API gateway. And also, we only have two services, right? Let's say we have 10 services. Each service will be able to call or any service will be able to call any other service how they know where they are, how quiz service knows where the question service is. Do we have to remember the IP address or do we have to uh, do something for that? And that's where we also need to go for something called a registry where they can search each other, right? So that is called a service registry. So we need API gateway, we need a load balancer, we need a service gateway. And also what if something goes wrong? What if their particular service is not working? So a user is requesting for a quiz and quiz is dependent upon question. What if question is down? In that case, quiz service is basically waiting for the response, right? So we have to also do something called fail fast, right? So you have to say, hey, if it is not responding, let us know that it is not responding so that we can find alternatives, right? So you have to find a way to get the fallback. You have to also respond to the client if something goes wrong. And that all comes under this microservices. You know, building microservices is easy, but connecting them and achieving all these things will take time. And in the sub subsequent videos, we are going to implement each, each of them. So we'll try to implement the API gateway, we'll try to implement the service registry and the load balancer. And also the circuit breaker, which will, what is circuit breaker, we'll, we'll talk about that later. So this is the entire plan. In the next video, we'll try to create our first microservice from this. Uh, we'll break down into two parts, the question microservice and a quiz microservice. And uh, yeah, a lot of changes will be there. So see you in the next video.